In the 1990s, the Air Force began developing a high-tech research facility in Alaska. It was claimed that the site's purpose was to investigate the ionosphere, a key layer in the upper atmosphere that could potentially improve communications. The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, has been carrying out research programs for decades in its eye-opening headquarters located in the flat grounds of North America. However, there's been wide speculation about the true nature of such a huge and imposing complex with 180 colossal antennas. And while scientists have continually denied that something mysterious is happening behind closed doors, many experts are convinced that the building is not what they say it is. Ionosphere Research The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program began in 1990, when the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy proposed studying the ionosphere and its use for radio communication. However, it did not begin construction until three years later, under the command of the Air Force. The scientific facility was built near Gakona, Alaska, west of Wrangell St. Elias National Park. The site was chosen for its significantly flat ground near the North Pole, where auroras occur. While HARP was constructed near a major highway, it was isolated enough from other sources of electricity or radio interference. HARP's primary instrument is known as the Ionospheric Research Instrument, or IRI, and it consists of 180 radio antennas arrayed in a grid over 33 acres. The whole place was designed to analyze the ionosphere, a segment of the Earth's upper atmosphere that extends from 53 miles above the surface to 370 miles up. It's also the atmosphere's outermost layer, and it gets its name from the ionized atoms and molecules caused by the sun's ultraviolet light. The ionosphere is also where the aurora phenomenon occurs, when solar wind particles collide with oxygen and nitrogen atoms. This part of the atmosphere is important for the U.S. military because it plays a crucial role in radio communications. Low radio frequencies allow for long-distance communications due to the wave's reflection off the ionosphere. In contrast, Higher frequency radio communications with satellites pass through the ionosphere. When HARP sends a radio beam into the ionosphere, it can study its response and accurately measure an otherwise inaccessible part of the atmosphere. Its high power radio frequency transmitter perturbs small portions of the ionosphere, and then the perturbations are measured by other instruments. The IRI works with frequencies between 2.7 and 10 megahertz and a power of 3.6 megawatts. When the radio waves are transmitted upward into the ionosphere, they cause electrons to move in waves, which increases their temperature. Thus, HARP is called an ionospheric heater, and it's the most powerful in the world. At HARP, scientists can study the reactions of the ionosphere to changing conditions, such as the constant influence from the sun. Occasionally, solar flares send particles towards Earth, which can disrupt communications and the planet's electrical grid. If scientists and researchers can have a deeper understanding of what happens in the upper atmosphere, it's possible that they could mitigate its effects. Still, many people across the world believe this explanation is merely a facade. Controversy Given that the project has been funded by the U.S. military and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, Many question whether there are occult intentions behind the facility. One of the most vocal opponents is physicist Bernard Eastland, a prominent scientist who has authored 53 scientific papers and 23 patents for diverse applications. One of these patents, number US 4686605, was an adaptation of concepts first proposed by Nikola Tesla, titled Method and Apparatus for Altering a Region in the Earth's Atmosphere, Ionosphere, and or Magnetosphere. In it, Eastland proposed a 40-mile-square radio transmitter akin to HARP. By using Alaskan natural gas, the apparatus would generate current, creating electromagnetic radiation that would then excite a section of the ionosphere. The patent also speculated about, quote, possible ramifications and potential future developments, such as magnetotelluric surveys, local weather modification, and missile defense. Eastland later claimed that HARP was based on his patents, fueling a lengthy list of conspiracy theories that have not been scientifically corroborated, but are still regarded as technologically feasible. In 1996, Rosalie Bertel warned that HARP had the potential to be weaponized, and author Michelle Chosidovsky wrote that, quote, Recent scientific evidence suggests 
that HARP is fully operational and has the capability of triggering floods, hurricanes, droughts, and earthquakes. Author Nick Begich Jr. wrote a book titled Angels Don't Play This Harp, where he maintained that harp could trigger earthquakes. He even suggested that the upper atmosphere could be turned into a giant lens, creating the illusion that the sky was on fire. Begich also manages a website that claims harp is genuinely a mind control device. The European Parliament once held a hearing about the program, in which environmental concerns were discussed. And even Russia has objected to the program with its parliament expressing, quote, Under the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, the U.S. is creating new integral geophysical weapons that may influence the near-Earth medium with high-frequency radio waves. The significance of this quantitative leap could be compared to the transition from cold steel to firearms, or from conventional weapons to nuclear weapons. A Russian journal also noted that it could, quote, trigger a cascade of electrons that could flip Earth's magnetic poles. Over the years, HARP has been blamed for several major disasters, including thunderstorms in Iran and Pakistan, and power outages. Furthermore, some claim it was responsible for the downing of TWA Flight 800. And some accuse the facility of causing the Gulf War Syndrome and Chronic Fatigue Syndrome. Former Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez even asserted that HARP had caused the 2010 Haiti earthquake, and online conspiracy theorists blame it for the 2011 tsunami in Japan. Still, some individuals are even more willing to take their beliefs to the next level. In 2016, two men from Georgia were arrested for allegedly plotting domestic terrorism while carrying a massive arsenal that included AR-15 rifles, Glock handguns, a Remington rifle, and thousands of rounds of ammunition. The men were planning to destroy HARP because they suspected the facility not only manipulated the weather or controlled minds, but was also a trap for people's souls. According to the police, The men stated that, quote, God told them to go and blow this machine up that kept souls, so souls could be released. Academics. The massive premises cost taxpayers over $290 million to build. Earmarked by the late Senator Ted Stevens, HARP won approval and hosted several projects, including the creation of the first artificial aurora in 2005. In 2013, the program was temporarily shut down, and the U.S. military wished to destroy the facility to no avail. Professor Dennis Papadopoulos of the University of Maryland wrote, quote, While the Air Force neither wants nor appreciates the unique value of HARP, users from several federal agencies, laboratories, and universities, and friendly nations such as Canada, Britain, Taiwan, South Korea, Sweden, and Norway are eager to use its unique resources which would further spread American influence and leadership. Control of the facility and its equipment was then turned over to the University of Alaska Fairbanks in mid-2015. From then on, it has been available for researchers on a pay-per-use basis, and findings are routinely published in major research journals, while all activities are logged and publicly available. An annual open house is also hosted at the venue, and any civilian can tour the site. When asked about HARP, American astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson once stated that, quote, There are people who are sure that the government is stockpiling aliens and controlling everything about anything we would ever think about, and they clearly never worked for the government because their level of incompetence and inefficiency knows no bounds. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave us a comment down below.